Okay, so I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan, and so it pains me to tell you that this is not a mythical tree called an end coming to life in the forest, but rather a tree in the forest dealing with very strong winds or a windstorm. So what happened in Quebec, in Sacré-Cœur, we had explosive cyclogenesis, a very strong storm rapidly intensifying and produced really strong wind gusts that were somewhat relentless throughout the forest. So the tree was experiencing these strong winds. Well, Dan, there have been a record-breaking 10 Category 5 storms around the world this season. One of those, Category 5 Wolaka, came very close to one of the islands on the north end of the Hawaiian island chain, a very small island, but that storm surge completely submerged the island. I want to show you pictures of East Island before it was submerged, but this is an uh, ecologically crucial island to the Hawaiian chain. Here's a satellite image taken of the island in June. And here's what it looks like after Walaka passed through. Much of the island is gone except for a few small sandbars. This is significant because according to NOAA, East Island is home to about 50% of the green sea turtle nesting population and 30% of monk seal pups are born there every year and you can see the dramatic uh, altering. This is a story that many island nations, especially in the Pacific, uh, are, are trying to communicate right now, that it isn't always a slow rise and a slow submerging of the islands. This is a small example, uh, but sometimes it just takes a big event uh, to completely submerge a, a habitat. Uh, very sad to see how climate change is playing out across this planet. There's just one example after another of environmental loss, human tragedy, Pretty shocking stuff. Johanna Wagstaff, thanks very much. Even by Mother Nature's standards, it was unique. They were bracing for a storm, but faced this instead. We've got a tornado! A ferocious vortex of wind, rain and ice dubbed a hail nado. Extremely violent supercells have cut a path of destruction across a vast area of southern Queensland. just massive. I've never ever seen anything like this before. The trees just stripped ice, hail absolutely everywhere. Birds even stripped of their feathers. Hail the size of tennis balls. A system so severe forecasters took the rare step of issuing this emergency alert. In Gympie this was the sound of people in its path. I've been through plenty of cyclones, but that, that storm was probably the worst, worst that I've seen. A severe thunderstorm warning was in place, but nothing could have prepared residents for this. Please hold, Chad. The sound of rushing water is drowned out by helicopters sent from Israel. Flash floods on Thursday have resulted in what authorities are calling one of the worst natural disasters to hit Jordan in years. A rescue operation is underway and at least 11 people, all seriously injured, have been found so far. Search teams are looking for 16 people who are still missing. Jordan has experienced heavy rains this week. Witnesses say the children were visiting popular hot springs inland from the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is the lowest point on Earth and prone to deadly floods. A super typhoon has wreaked havoc on the northern Mariana Islands, destroying hundreds of homes in the process. Uh, the storm has left communities in ruins, with residents likening the aftermath to a war zone. Officials say it was one of the worst storms they have ever seen. Rescue and relief operations are underway after the most powerful typhoon in half a century passed the islands of Tinian and Saipan on Thursday local time. It moves toward the west at 20 kilometers per hour. These wind gusts, 306 kilometers per hour, I mean, that's a big deal.
questo? Dove va questo? È chiuso! Mangoloide! Roma! Roma! Thousands have been evacuated along Mexico's Pacific coast as the hurricane moves in. Off the coast of Mexico, Deborah Kasprick is seeing the first signs of the storm. Everybody's just kind of hunkering down, trying to stay dry. You can see the images coming out of Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, of the high surf that made its way there as the storm made landfall. But it still had winds of over 120 miles an hour. The hurricane hit an area near Mazatlan. At least 4,000 people have been evacuated from coastal towns. Take a look at this video. This is dramatic. This shows that rushing water from major rains in Mexico. They tell us it's been raining there for about the past 30 hours. Here in the States, heavy rain from Willow will make its way to Texas. Still recovering from major flooding just last week. No ordinary high tide. As Hurricane Willa made landfall on Mexico's Pacific coast, Heavy waves and rain lashed against the seaside resort of Puerto Vallarta. His homes were battered by the lowest pressure hurricane to hit American shores since 1969. My colleague Ginger Z experiencing the storm dangerously close, watching as the ferocity of the winds changed the landscape right in front of her eyes. I just saw something I have never seen in real life. I saw an entire home taken off of its foundation and rolled down the street. My heart is racing. I, again, have never seen something like a, an entire home, a well-built home, rolling down the street. And I'll tell you right now, it makes you shake. The blue house across the street from where Ginger was locked down during the storm vanished. Record-breaking storm, the strongest to ever hit the Florida panhandle made landfall just days after the United Nations released a dire report on the impacts of climate change. Scientists have been warning us for years that we can expect to see more extreme weather with climate change. The heat waves, wildfires and heavy rainfall events of recent months all over the world underscore uh, these warnings. The damage left behind by Hurricane Michael is overwhelming. The storm's 155 mile per hour winds shredded homes in Mexico Beach. Hurricane Michael's quick and powerful strike came in with a roar. The most powerful storm to hit the United States in 50 years. But the expanse of the damage is mind boggling. Down the road, the walls on a large church stripped away. Amazingly, the cross on top still standing. As we go just 15 miles from the Tyndall Air Force Base in the Florida Panhandle to Mexico Beach, Florida, which was practically wiped off the map after Hurricane Michael. On the beach, one of the few houses that still stands, and the images of it are just stark. It's known as the Sand Palace. So last weekend, we went to Mexico Beach. Democracy Now! traveled to the Florida Panhandle, and we found Russell King there at his home, the Sand Palace. Uh, the increasing intensity and ferocity of these storms, scientists say, I mean, overwhelmingly, that um, this is being fueled by human activity. Your thoughts on this? Well, um, I, I believe in the Bible. I also believe in science. and. Um, it's, it's, I, I don't know what all causes these storms to be so frequent now and so ferocious. I say, I say look around and look at the science. I mean, sometimes people say things politically to be expedient, but if, if, if there's a 1% chance that human activity has contributed to this, don't we need to look at that closely? And uh, if there's scientists, if, if there's other data out there, um, I mean, show it to me. I, I, I don't know except I see people down here hurting terribly. People have lost their homes, people have lost everything. Whatever the cause, whether it's human activity or not, to build down here, you're gonna to have to do more of this and I'm gonna to have to do more to survive the next one. But I would hope that the politicians would do more to try to deal with, with what's going on. Landmark UN report released just this week warned mankind has 12 years to dramatically reduce greenhouse gas emissions or face global catastrophe with severe drought, floods, rising sea levels, and extreme heat set to cause mass dislocation and destruction. 
This is UN Meteorological Agency Chief Petteri Talas. There's extreme urgency and, uh, and, and countries uh, were giving their pledges uh, uh, after the Paris Agreement uh, and, uh, and so far uh, the progress hasn't been uh, good enough uh, that we would, uh, we would move towards uh, 1.5 or 2 degrees target. So that's, uh, there's, there's a clearly a need for uh, much higher ambition level to, 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 to reach even 2 degrees uh, target. So we are more moving towards uh, 3 to 5 at the moment. There are some estimations what is the difference between 1.5 degree and uh, and, and, and two degree, and, and one of the major issues is that uh, there would be four, 420 million people less uh, suffering because of climate change if we would uh, be able to limit uh, the warming to 1.5 degree. All the emissions that we have emitted to the atmosphere means that this negative trend uh, will continue for the coming coming decades. So that's uh, that's that, that's that's going to happen, and that means a growing amount of uh, disasters and, and challenges to climate change.